So, I decided to take a few days off leading up to Christmas, the one time of year I'm not sat in my PC, and what happens? A brand new trailer comes out for the first Black Ops 3 map pack called Awakening. So unfortunately it's a little bit late, but it's still going to show us our first look at a lot of the new multiplayer maps and the new zombies map, and there's a lot more detail than we've ever had before. So still want to share it with you guys, and hopefully you learn something new, so let's take a look at the brand new Black Ops 3 map pack called Awakening. Black Ops 3 is launched, and here at Treyarch, we couldn't be more excited about the millions of players around the world enjoying it every day. This is going to be an awesome season of DLC content, and it all begins with Awakening, and you won't want to miss it. Four new, awesome multiplayer maps, and one mind-blowing zombies experience. Let's take a closer look at what the team's working on. Awakening DLC for the multiplayer fans is going to be all about the maps. Every map is going to feel distinct and unique from the other maps. Every map is going to have a very purposeful and intentional design to structure around the movement system and also get players into those very satisfying kind of classic engagements, head-to-head, -head, boots on the ground, cover-based combat. Gauntlet is a map that is set in a military training facility in which each of the three paths in the map is a very different environment. One of them is a jungle environment, one of them is an arctic snowy climate, the other one is a rainy urban city scene. And for us it was really all about playing up this core philosophy that we have about the three lane structure of our maps. And we just wanted to kind of go over the top on that front with both visuals and gameplay. Splash is just a playful, really vibrant map. It's set in an abandoned water theme park. There are a lot of twisty, windy, enclosed water slides connecting the paths from one to the other. It's a map that really is designed for the fluidity and the flow of going from one path to the other and the excitement of fighting through the enclosed water slide. That's just something that's a new twist. You know, we haven't done something like that before and, and it was a fun opportunity for us to build that kind of gameplay into a map that's themed around a water park. But I mean, it also has a lot of opportunities for underwater combat. We wanted to really play up that that underwater swimming component of the game. Rise is set in snowy Zurich. It's on a construction facility. It really feels the most classic Call of Duty multiplayer of all the maps in the pack. It's really heavily focused on cover-to-cover -cover combat. It has a lot of variety in its lane structure. One lane is very long, has a lot of cat and mouse gameplay to it, some wall running opportunities. The middle lane really pushes players into an intense choke point, kind of an arena where all the paths converge. And the final path has a lot of underwater opportunities. I think the Rise is probably one of our most competitive maps in the set. And I think that uh, it's going to be exciting to see. Uh, hopefully it gets adopted into the esports season. I think that it's a lot of fun. Players are going to love it. The map that I'm most excited about in Awakening is Skyjacked for sure, which is a reimagining of, of the map Hijack from Black Ops 2. It's fast, it's frenetic, it's chaotic. It's a different take, a different twist on the original because of all the core movement opportunities that we've built into the map. It's just very exciting. It was a fun map for us to bring back. In this chapter of our zombie story, we'll be introducing episode four, the Eisendracht. This is the first chapter in an epic time-traversing zombies odyssey that will unfold over the course of Black Ops 3's four DLC packs in 2016. I'm a sucker for medieval castles. <laughs> That's where we're going in the Eisendracht. We've got this wonderful ancient castle that all the kind of evil forces and all the kind of mind-bending stuff that we do in our zombie storyline is all kind of infested in this one location. The castle was built upon an ancient site where many dark atrocities have occurred over the centuries. The site contains massive deposits of the recently discovered Element 115. This allows us to kind of play with other narrative and thematic elements uh, in a setting which is uh, a personal favorite of mine. On the Awakening DLC, we'll also be introducing four new Mega Gumballs. This chapter is very much about introducing new concepts, but then also bringing it to a conclusion. We're incredibly excited to answer a lot of the questions the community has, bring some sort of resolution to a lot of the torment that we put our fans into, and then also maybe introduce some new concepts to have them puzzling out into the future. So as you can see, it's on next year. Clear your calendars, because Call of Duty Black Ops 3 Awakening is available on February 2nd, first on PlayStation 4. 
So as always, an awesome DLC trailer. This is the first map pack for Call of Duty Black Ops 3. So we're taking a look at everything, starting off with Gauntlet. Now, when we first saw this, I wasn't too sure if it'd be a map that changed in design every single time you play it. But if you see here, it's actually a map which is built around three different environments, focusing on the three lane system that Treyarch absolutely love when it comes to multiplayer map design. If you guys don't know, typically most maps are the three lane system where you've got a middle route, a left hand route, or a right hand route to get from one side of the map to the other, which is typically the two sides of the map that you're going to be spawning at. I really like it. I think it works amazingly. I love Treyarch map designs. And in Gauntlet, this is going to be carried across with the sort of jungle themed, the snowy themed, and then the more, uh, the more sort of city themed areas of the map each representing their own lane going from one side of the map to the other. I think it looks really, really good. I think I'm going to like it a lot. And Gauntlet sounds awesome. Next up is Splash. This is a prime example. Literally, um... As Dan Bunting here, one of the lead multiplayer designers, says, is this a chance for the, for the actual designers in the multiplayer side of things to open up their design theories and ideas for something a little bit more creative, a little bit more crazy that hasn't been done before? This one focuses a lot on water, since water hasn't really been done very successfully in Call of Duty up until Black Ops 3 with the introdu introduction of swimming and the ability to actually shoot people while you're in water. So we've got water slides going on here. I wasn't sure how interactive this map would be when we saw the very first images for it but we can actually go through the water slides use them to traverse around the map and actually a lot of action will happen in the water parts of the map as well because of course splash is basically just a water park based around and themed around a pirate castle so it's absolutely nuts i think it's going to be a ton of fun to play something very different that we haven't really seen before when it comes to map design within Call of Duty, so as you can see here, a little bit of a underwater action. I'm really looking forward to this one. It's going to be mixing it up a lot compared to all the other maps that we currently have within Call of Duty Black Ops 3, which is always a good thing. So two out of the four multiplayer maps. Next up is Rise. This heralds back to more of a classic multiplayer map for Call of Duty, and I believe to be one of the larger maps out of the three that we've seen so far. The reason I'm not mentioning the fourth is because uh, you guys may know what it is already, but it is going to be absolutely awesome. So Rise that we're looking at here, a little bit bigger, will incorporate a lot of the new movement features like the ability to wall run and uh, you see a lot of tube, tubular designed uh, parts of the map as well, which actually allows you to run around them. And for those of you guys that don't know, you can actually get a lot of height by using these parts of the, of the map to actually run around, spin around, jump up. And if you've ever done any of the um, free running sessions, you'll know that you can get a lot of height. And this is a... Good example of how you can just get some crazy, crazy positioning. If you're a bit of a sniper, you can probably go for some crazy shots from really high positions as well. So again, heading back to the three lane system that Treyarch absolutely love, but with some longer lines of sights, and then some more close quarter action uh, happening within some of the buildings, but also throwing in some water parts of the map for some swimming and some more uh, water gun fights that Treyarch are really proud of and really happy with how they've implemented it within multiplayer, because it just hasn't been done before, uh, but within Black Ops 3, it's something new, unique, and uh, they're doing, a, they've done a great job there. I think it's a lot of fun, and underwater gunfights always feel awesome, and also sound awesome when you find those bullets off. Finally, in terms of multiplayer, Skyjacked, baby. As soon as I saw this, I was like, hold on. This has to be a remake of Hijacked, and it is indeed, my friend. Apart from the fact it's just floating in the sky on this crazy, crazy four rotor bladed thing uh, that looks absolutely nuts. Of course, Hijacked, if you haven't played it from Call of Duty Black Ops 2, is absolutely nuts. I'll throw an image on screen for you guys to take a look at so you can see just how it works. But it is very, very small. Along the sides here, you've got actually a little bit of wall running and also a few alternate routes that weren't available to get to the underside of the ship as well, which is absolutely epic, man. I feel like the only things that would have changed in this map would be things that have to be changed and make it even more awesome. I cannot wait to play Skyjacked. This, my friends, is the first DLC Zombies map that looks nuts. Like, I absolutely love the design that's going on here. It's based in a medieval castle, as I mentioned within the first image that we got for this DLC. And it looks just absolutely insane. A few open areas, which is absolutely fantastic if you want to group zombies together and actually take them on and uh, hope you have a little bit more of a chance of living and surviving to those higher rounds. Their Eisendrach is absolutely insane. Now, this is apparently based just around the time where the um, 115 substance was actually found and the whole sort of zombie thing was taking off. So, a lot of storytelling, a lot of the actual... Uh, a telling of the characters and the actual uh, sort of almost the behind the scenes of the deeper storytellings and the narrative of zombies will be unraveled I believe within this very first zombies DLC pack for Black Ops 3 so I'm sure we're gonna get a ton of interesting information 
You can see what looks to be in the background there. Um, the light, of course, for the mystery box. Except the light looks a little bit different. So I want to say maybe the mystery box will be a little bit different to what we've seen before. But we're going to get so much information. We're going to get a brand new zombies experience, which is going to be absolutely awesome. And this castle looks so fun to get around. Now, it does look extremely dark. You're like, okay, it's dark, whatever. But when we first play in this map, that darkness, that inability of knowing where to go is really going to hit us and is not going to be easy at all. On the right-hand side there, we can actually see ourselves uh, sight of hand or, of course, speed cola. So we also saw, I believe, the M8 on the wall there in the left-hand side of that room as well. I believe a lot of the Easter egg stuff will be going down in that room. We also get a look at the gumball machine in the background of this shot very, very quickly. And there will be new gumballs added into this DLC pack, which is awesome. If you guys are a big fan of the gobble gums, they are absolutely awesome. We had a few sort of signage there, uh, a few pieces of signage. If you actually want to pause it and are mad into zombies and want to know a little bit of a translation, a lot of the signs will actually translate to things such as number of rounds or survive or uh, go down, which I believe would be sort of like hints and sort of um, symbols used for the deeper Easter eggs that are often involved or always involved, really, when it comes to zombies within Call of Duty Black Ops. So it's going to be absolutely nuts, my friends. I cannot wait to play this. I think it's going to be absolutely fantastic. I'm, I'm still playing through Shadows of Evil and the Giant. I think we're doing a lot more Zombies content for you guys. I know you love it so much. Out of all the stuff I've done so far, and I need to do more. I know I need to do more, guys. So do not worry. Tons of zombie stuff happening. So this is absolutely everything that we're going to be getting within the Call of Duty Black Ops 3 DLC pack called Awakening, which will be coming out first in early February on PlayStation 4, which is February the 2nd, and then around about a month later, February on Xbox and PC. And I believe it is only, unfortunately, on next gen. So that's PlayStation 4, PC, or Xbox One. So hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think of all of the new content. Apologies, it is a little bit late. As I said, I was away. Don't normally do it, but it just happened to overlap. I'm really sorry. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys tomorrow, as always, with a brand new video.